In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with finding the mean or the average for a set of data. In example A, it says Stephen has been working at Wendy's for 15 months. The following numbers are the number of hours that Stephen worked at Wendy's for each of the past seven months. And then we have seven numbers listed which represent the hours he worked each month. What is the mean number of hours that Stephen worked each month? So to figure out the mean, what we're going to do is add up all seven numbers, and then we'll divide that by seven because we have seven numbers. So first, you have to add up all seven numbers and then divide by seven. The sum of the numbers is 326. So whenever you divide by seven, you get your average, which is approximately 56 points or 46.6. So the mean number of hours that he worked each month is 46.6 hours. Example B, Mark operates a shuttle service that employs eight people. Find the mean age of these workers if the ages of the eight employees are as follows. And then we have our eight ages. If you were to take a sample of three employees from the group of eight and calculate the mean age for these three workers, would the result change? So we have two questions here. First, we're asked to find the whole population mean. So the mean of all eight ages. So let's do that first. To do that, we have to add up all eight ages and then divide by eight. So the sum of all eight ages is 378. And you get that by adding up 53 plus 60, or 55 plus 63 plus 34 and so on. Then divide by eight because there are eight employees and you get 47.25. And this is the population mean. So it's the mean for all eight employees. It includes all eight of them. Now the second part of the question down here asked you to find the sample mean. If you were to just randomly pick three of the employees and calculate the mean of their ages, what would that be? And would it be the same as the population mean? Now it shouldn't necessarily be the same. In fact, if it's the same, it's sort of a coincidence because it's not usually going to be exactly the same. It might be close. Let's just try it out by picking these first three employees and calculating the sample mean for their ages. So the sample mean is usually noted by an X with a line over it. We're going to add up 55 plus 63 plus 34 and then divide by three in order to figure out that sample mean. And when we do that, we get that the sample mean is 50 0.67, which is definitely bigger than the population mean. So the sample mean is not necessarily going to be the same as the population mean. It often will be slightly different because it depends on what part of the population you picked your sample from. We could have picked another three employees at random and found that that sample mean was below the population mean. So it all depends on the people you pick. It's important to realize that if you're given only a sample mean, that that means it's not necessarily the same thing as the full population mean. But it does give you some sense for what's going on. Example C, the selling prices of the last 10 houses sold in a small town are listed below. And we have 10 different prices here. Calculate the mean selling price of the last 10 homes that were sold. Okay, so to calculate the mean selling price, that means we would have to add up all 10 numbers and then divide by 10. So first, find the sum. That means add up all 10 numbers. When you add up all 10 numbers, you get $1,393,600. So then we want to divide that by 10 because there are 10 houses in order to figure out our average, which is 139,360.
It should be noted that this is only a sample mean because these 10 houses are only a sample of the houses that were recently sold. They are the last 10 houses sold, but perhaps before that, right before that, there were even more houses sold. So this is really only a sample. So you would call this your X bar.